White Ribbon Day is on the 23rd of November. We're here with the Western Sydney Wanderers. My name's Lola Bonta. My name is Oriol Riera. And we're get right into it. So why do you play football? I think I play because I love this game. I love the, the good moments, the, the, the bad moments. I think that uh, to, to go forward to these bad, bad moments, you need to love this, this game and I'm, I'm here I'm 32, so I, I, I want to play to 40 minimum because I love to play, I love to train ev every day, go to training, I speak, I speak with my teammates, uh, and I think that uh, uh, enjoying football day, day by day is, uh, makes me feel very, very happy. Yeah, I would completely agree. I mean, I started out playing numerous sports when I was younger, but soccer was the one I always stuck with. It's competitive. I enjoy every single tackle, every missed shot. It's just everything about the sport. I think as soon as I step on the pitch, I've loved. So I will probably play. I don't know if I'll play till 40, but I'm going to keep pushing for <laughs> sure. <laughs> you never know, eh? You never know. You never know. If, if we start making money like the men, maybe. <laughs> Have you ever had any experience or exposure to, to gender inequality? Yeah, so just touching on kind of what we talked about, I mean, We've always said that women's sports, professional sports, have come so far right now, but it just sucks to say that at the standard we've set it at. I think um, for us in the States, in America, when you're younger, you think, okay, I'm gonna make it to college and that's your end result. Lucky enough for me, the professional league started up right when I was in college, so I was able to go right out. And I mean, I've sacrificed my degree, which is gonna give me that could have given me a stable job, a very well-paying job, but like we were discussing, I enjoy soccer so much. It's like, why not keep playing while I'm still fit, while I'm still young? So I would say, obviously, the pay gap is very different, but with all the support from the men right now, and I think on an international basis with our women's international teams doing so much better, I think it will eventually get there. It's just, can we keep pushing it? And how long or how quickly can we get it there? Yeah, I think about the, the, the salary, there are big gap to improve. I think that the, the leagues here in America and Spain also is improving a lot. I think yeah. that uh, we have now a lot of TVs that is putting the, uh, the games, the, mm -hmm. the league, but I think that there are still a big gap to, yes. to improve in salary terms. So you have children. How do you teach your youngsters about equal opportunity in sport? I think that um, I have two, two daughters, and um, not in a sport, I think in the life. I, I try to teach them, to give them a good education, a good, uh, a good uh, lifestyle, a good uh, way to live. And this, this, this mix, I think, if, will give them a, a be respectful for everything. Uh, uh, be grateful, um, understand um, every sport, understand the competition, understand that uh, everyone has the same opportunity, everyone has the same uh, chance to get something. You know, I think that the, the, the education when they are very, very young is, uh, is, the, is the first stage that for them will be, will be taught to understand that this problem that uh, was was bigger before now is getting is getting better, but I think that still still there are big big gap to to improve. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, when you think about it, sports always teach kids so many different morals, but I think we also have to focus on the education as well. And so, if we kind of develop both those aspects, and I'm not speaking just for women as well female and male, yeah, for, for everyone. It's, I mean, I think that gap will close quicker than we think. Yes. But yeah, it's just teaching the youngsters, the morals, like you said, respect um, with the sports, the competitiveness, but just all develop like that, I think we'll get there. I think now we have a lot of 
a lot of moments that, for example, uh, we start now. We had uh, we have uh, women referees that are starting to to be in the in the in the male games. So I think that this this is very very good. This is very good to to show to show to the kids that we have to respect them. That uh, uh, if it's a fault, it's a fault. Uh, uh, try to 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 give to them or to try to to show them the the best way to to understand the football. It's woman, it's male, doesn't matter. It's, we can play mix. We can, we can. The men's referees, the the women's referees can be there. Yeah. And I think this uh, try to show this uh, to the to the kids these these moments. I think is the best. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that's the beautiful thing about our the sport that we play, especially. Males can play it really well. Females can play it really well. You play different systems. There's no set rule book to soccer. There's different coaches impl like implementing different methods and everything. So I think because our sport is so fluid, that's the beautiful part of it. How much have you sacrificed to get to where you are? Yeah, so going back to this, I've, like I said, when we were younger, you aspire to go to college because playing professional wasn't, you, it wasn't even possible, it didn't exist. We had our national team, but that's what, 22 girls out of the whole country that are gonna play past that, and even then they weren't even getting paid. So I think at that point you just, you have to focus so much on your education as well. So you're not just missing like they discussed earlier, you're not missing dances or weddings or anything like that. You're missing so much more for practice, for your studies. And then for me, when I did get to college, I accomplished that. And then we had a professional league and I'm missing out on relationships and future job security and salaries. So it's obviously difficult. We, so many people go through this, but I think at the end of the day, we did that because we have so much that we love about the sport and we've put so much into it and it's given us so much back. It's like our number one relationship. It's a marriage that's gonna last forever. Yeah, I think that every, uh, every young player that wants to be a, a professional footballer or professional in, I think it's not just in football, in every sport, I think that uh, they have to know how much we sacrifice to, to arrive there. For example, I rem remember now that um, uh, I lose a lot of friends when I start to I start to play. I'm, I'm from from a small town. That in ten years old I went to B Barcelona to play, so I, I lose everything, and and I start to have really friends when I was twenty. So. Uh, Really, really, I, I didn't have any relationship, any, any relation with the friends. Uh, they went to the cinema, they went to parties, they went to, uh, to have fun, just have fun in the afternoons. And I was just playing the weekends, playing football, and then study because during the, the week, Monday to, to Friday, uh, I didn't have time. I, I arrived, I think I, the taxi collected me at five o'clock and uh, my train was at seven o'clock in Barcelona so two hours by car going two hours come back I arrive 12 o'clock go to sleep every day every day every day so I think that we sacrifice a lot of things to, to arrive there but is what I'm what what I told you I think that when you love these sports when you love uh, being in contact day by day uh, training um, uh, the lifestyle that this sport give you, I think that this is this you, you can you can go forward with everything. Yeah, one hundred percent. I definitely would rather play in any game over any movie, any dance, because yeah. that's how much joy I get out of that. You lost a lot of things, but this moment that you play, I think, is the exactly. is the best moment. That and then when we're done, we're we're gonna miss out on it so much. We're gonna be wanting to have to get massages. We're gonna be missing those injuries and rehabbing because we dedicated so much time into that. So to wrap it up, what message would you have for a younger version of yourself about leadership and respect? And I think that uh, my principle and the principle that everyone has to know that is everyone, the number one, everyone 
has to have the same opportunities, the same chance to arrive whatever they want. Uh, uh, and this, this starts giving respect to everyone. I, we spoke about uh, women referees that are starting to be in, in men's football. Uh, give them respect. Uh, uh, like a f like a, like a father, like a parents. When we watch football with young kids, that they are mixed. Uh, uh, respect them because sometimes the girls are much better than the, yeah. than, than the men. It happens a lot. So uh, I think that uh, for the young kids, the best is that they have to know that everyone has the same opportunities. Every know know that everyone uh, will have the same way to arrive. They need the same opportunities, they need the same facilities, and, and I think it, it takes time, but they, they will have this in a few years. I think that uh, uh, everyone has to know that uh, the respect is the principal values that everyone has to, has to get. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My, um, I was lucky. My dad, was, my dad only raised my brother and myself on his own, and he was a police officer, so respect was something that was instilled at us right away. He made us do martial arts where their whole basis was off respect and consideration. So just knowing that from the beginning and Australians laugh at me all the time when I say ma'am and sir because those aren't common terminologies here but that's just what we were told to say Mr. and Mrs. and then last name because you respect everybody. It's a form of respect right off the bat. So I would say especially to the youngsters, if we instill that, it creates a better community right off the bat. And the teens in general, like you respect each other, you have a better team. We were just discussing yesterday with the A-League boys is like some of their teammates they enjoy the most because they're for the boys and they respect each other because they show those characteristics that you want to instill in your kids and having a coach and your teammates. So I think just with it starting there and them giving a good example of respect, it's going to go to the younger kids and just develop through there. Mm -hmm.